Judgment in the matter of J.P. Witter Limited <laughs> versus Commissioners for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Lord Carnworth will explain the decision of the court. This appeal is about enforcement of the construction industry scheme which was introduced to counter tax evasion by, the, by subcontractors <coughs> in the construction industry. The provisions are in the Finance Act 2004. It requires contractors to deduct from payments to subcontractors pay to the revenue a proportion of all payments in respect of labour under a subcontract. Subcontractors may obtain exemption by obtaining registration for gross payment. Detailed requirements are laid down for such registration, including a record of compliance with tax requirements. Section 66 provides that the board may cancel registration on various grounds, including non-compliance with such requirements. There is a right of appeal to the first tier tribunal. The appellant in this case is a family-run business of water well engineers. It has been registered for gross payment since 1984. But in 2009, and again in 2010, its registration was cancelled for compliance failures. But on both occasions, the registration was reinstated by the revenue following appeals. However, again, in between August 2010 and March 2011, the company was late in making PAYE payments on seven occasions, the del delays varying from a few days to over 100 days on one occasion. It is accepted that the failure was out without reasonable excuse. In May 2011, the revenue cancelled the company's registration. The company appealed on various grounds uh, and succeeded in the first tier tribunal on the grounds that the board should have taken into account uh, the severely detrimental effect of cancellation on its business. That decision was reversed in the upper tribunal and um, again in the Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court unanimous, unanimously dismisses the company's appeal. Uh, the company makes, in effect, two arguments. The first is that the discretion under Section 66 is unfettered in its terms and therefore do not exclude consideration of the consequences of cancellation for the company. The second is that the company has a right to protection of property under Article 1 of the first protocol to the European Convention on Human Rights, that is A1P1, um, in that the cancellation is said to be a disproportionate interference with the possession represented by re registration. However, the first argument overlooks the basic principle that any statutory discretion must be exercised consistently with the objects and scope of the statutory scheme. The discretion does not extend to consideration of matters which relate neither to the requirements for registration for gross payment nor to the objective of securing compliance with those requirements. The scheme is highly prescriptive, setting out narrowly defined conditions for registration in the first place. Um, it is wholly inconsistent with that tightly drawn scheme for there to be implied a general dispensing power, as the company argues. Turning to A1P1, the court sees force in the revenue's argument that even if the rights conferred by the registration amount to possessions under that article, they cannot extend beyond the limits set by the legislation by which they are created. In any event, any interference with the rights was clearly proportionate, having regard to the leg legitimate objects of the scheme and the wide margin of appreciation allowed to member states in tax matters. Thank you. Court will now adjourn.